personality disorder cluster B. We have familiar with the personality trait. Have you ever we think that personality might have some disorders? That's what we call in medicine personality disorder. So in the previous discussion, we have discussed about cluster C personality disorder. Uh, in this discussion, I will bring the brief uh, discussion about the cluster B. So there is a uh, total 10 type of personality disorder. They're subdivided into three clusters, cluster A, cluster B, cluster C. And cluster B has four sub subtypes of personality disorder. Uh, before going to the personality disorders, let me briefly talk about what is the normal personality trait when we call disorder, how it is formed basically, and what you need to do if someone has personality disorder. I welcome all of you. This is Dr. Bibhuti from Office State, New York. Well, um, let me recap from the previous discussion. People have unique personalities made up of a complex combination of different traits. Personality traits affect how people understand, relate to the world around them, as well as how they see themselves. Ideally, people's personality traits allow them to flexibly adapt to their changing environment in ways that lead to more healthy relationship with others and better coping strategies. This is normal personality trait. When people have personality traits that are less adaptive, this leads to inflexibility and unhealthy coping. For example, they may manage stress by drinking or misusing drugs, have a hard time managing their anger, and find it hard to trust and connect with others. Then we call personality disorder. Personality form early in life, it is shaped through a blend of your genes that we call genetic genetical inheritance and also uh, by the environment in which you are living in. So these two factors plays important role to develop the per someone personalities. Uh, for example, your father or your parents may have some uh, personality traits that may transmit onto you. That's we call genetically inheritance. Also, the environment in which you born and grew up especially up to the seven years of the age this is very crucial um, during this period of time uh, the environment someone will live will basically make the foundation of the personality this includes your surroundings events that have happened to you and around you and relationship and patterns of interaction with family members and others so it's a very crucial, especially up to the age of seven, need to provide every children a such environment so that they can learn. They can learn how to become a better human. So personality disorder is mental health condition where people have a lifelong pattern of seeing themselves and reacting to others in ways that cause problems. People with personal disorder often have a hard time understanding emotion and tolerating distress and they act impulsively. This makes it hard for them to relate to others, causing serious issues and affecting their family life, social activities, work and school performance and overall quality of life. So basically, when someone has personality disorder, uh, it affects their life in different levels, work life, school life, family life, social lives. So 
Now let's talk about the cluster B. What are the subtribes? Before going to the subtribes, let me give one word for each type of personality clusters. So cluster A, we usually call weird, cluster B, awkward, and cluster C, clingy, that we discussed in the previous discussion. In this cluster B personality disorder, there are four subtypes. Cluster B personality disorders have a consistently dysfunctional pattern of dramatic, overly emotional thinking and unpredictable behavior. They include borderline personality disorder, has a strong fear of being alone or abandoned, has ongoing feelings of emptiness, sees self as being unstable or weak, has deep relationships that are not stable, has up and down moods, often due to stress when interacting with others, threatens self-harm and behaves in ways that could lead to suicide, is often very angry, shows impulsive and risky behavior, such as having unsafe sex, gambling, or beans eating, has stress-related paranoia that comes and goes. So borderline personality disorder might also associate with psychosis. Simply it's called BFD liar. If you really want to know about uh, borderline personality disorder, it's very common in the society everywhere. There is a book I read long time ago called Don't Work on the Eggshells. It's very diff difficult books to read and understand, but it's very helpful to understand if you have someone living with borderline personality disorder. It will make your life very easy. The second personality disorder in the cluster B is histrionic personality disorder. Always six attention is overly emotional or dramatic or starts up sexual feelings to get attention, speaks dramatically with strong opinions, but has few facts or details to back them off, is easily led by others has shallow emotions that change quickly, is very concerned with physical appearance, thinks relationship with others are closer than they are. So this is the traits for hysteronic personality disorder. Let's talk about the third personality disorder in the cluster B. Cluster B. Narcissistic personality disorder has beliefs about being special and more important than others, has fantasies about power, success, and being attractive to others, does not understand the needs and feelings of others, stresses the truth about achievements or talents, expects constant praise and wants to be admired, feels superior to others and brags about it, experts favors and advantages without a good reason, often takes advantage of others, is jealous of others or believes that others are jealous of them. The fourth personality disorder in the cluster B is antisocial personality disorder. Um, you already get some idea what does mean by antisocial personality disorder. Uh, means they don't follow the social norms, rules, and regulation. Has little, if any, concern for the needs or feelings of others. Often lies, steals, use false names, and cons others. Has refuted, run ins with the law. Often violates the rights of the others. Is aggressive and often violent. Has little, if any, concern for personal safety or the safety of others. Behaves impulsively is often reckless, has little, if any, regret for how their behavior negatively affects others. So basically, uh, we can say these people basically violate rules, regulations, they involve legally. But there is a point uh, to diagnose as antisocial personality disorder 
most of them are need to be diagnosed as a contact disorder before the age of 16. But sometimes um, it's very hard to know that patient has contact disorder because they never seek for any mental health professionals um, so sometimes before the age of 16. Usually they ended up legally involved at early late 20 or early 30th then even though has no history of conduct disorder but we have to diagnose as antisocial personality disorder based on their records especially criminal records i as i work in a correction based facility i've met a lot of patients population with antisocial personality disorder as the primary diagnosis or the secondary diagnosis with other uh, major psychiatric disorder. Many people with one type of personality disorder also have symptoms at least one other type. So there could be multiple personality disorder at the same time. The number of symptoms a person has may vary. Well, this is all about cluster B personality disorder, but when you need to see the doctor, if you think so, you have any symptom of personality disorder, see that your doctor or mental health professionals. When personality disorder are not treated, they can cause serious issues in relationship and mood. Also, the ability to function and pursue personal goals may get old without any treatment. This is the end of the discussion today. Stay safe, stay connected, and stay blessed.